Hi, my name is Terry Sproul, and I want to welcome you to my studio. And yes, I'm back in my studio. So I'm home from Ohio and NAPTA and Michigan and all those places I got to enjoy while I was out there visiting Mr. Joe Rotella, who's not with us tonight. He is actually filming for uh, Scrapbook Soup uh, today and tomorrow, I believe. So that's where he is tonight. So he will not be joining us. But I had a really great time in Ohio, joining, um, having fun with him. We went up to U.S. Art Quest with Susan um, up there, and that place is awesome. If you ever get a chance to go up to the U.S. Art Quest um, shop and go into the paper section, oh my god, there's so much fun paper there, you will just get lost. Anyways, a um, couple little quick things to talk about. Um, we are having a design team call over at um, Robin's Nest, and you can find that information at um, Robin's, uh, excuse me, chatteringrobins.blogspot.com. It's one of the little tabs up on top. It says design team call. So if you are looking for a design team, check that out. Uh, Pamela's here, and Sharon's here, and Sherry, and Heather, and Lee, welcome, and a few others. Vanessa, it looks like we've got quite a few already in the room. Thank you. Yes, there is a huge fire here in San Diego. Um, I'm right now very safe, thank the Lord. Um, it's blowing west, and I live northeast, so I'm... Crossing my fingers that the wind continues to go the way it is, and um, not that I want anybody else to be unsafe, but if it continues to go that way, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> so, um, anyways, I hope, uh, I hope that they get that taken care of real quick. And our firemen are awesome, and I love our firemen, as you know. So, anyways, let's get down to business because I know you don't want to watch me just chit chat about firemen. Well, maybe you do. <laughs> Anyways, let me change channels and uh, we will get going here. So I love our firemen. Okay, I want to show you when I was down at Joe's, I did do a little art journaling and I did this page while I was there. And this is a technique that right here that I want to teach you um, on the bottom here. And what's really cool about this technique is this looks like it's really hard and you think, oh Terry, I can never do that, I can't paint or I can't draw like that, how, you know, how'd you do those beautiful flowers? Well, I'm going to tell you how I did it. It's totally cheating. It's paint by numbers, basically. You're going to absolutely love this technique. Um, just a little bit about the rest of the page. Um, that's actually a stencil and a stamp, and the flowers is a stamp. And I was actually in the U.S. Art Quest um, studio when I made this paint. So everything on this page is made with U.S. Art Quest um, products from the paints to the paint brushes I was using. I think the only thing that's not is this stamp, um, this stamp, and you know this stamp. So basically everything else, um, oh and this. This is something that Joe cut out during the class. But um, I mean this was, this paints are from US Art Quest. This is a napkin which is what I'm going to show you. This is a really pretty stamp that I got from Stampo, um, Stampendous. And I'll sh be showing you guys that later. And it's got a really cool mask and a face and everything. Not today, but I'll show you that. And then I used uh, Mica Delights on her flowers. So that's where it gets all that sparkle from. So anyways, I really like this page. I like the technique. So I want to teach you the technique. Oh, real quick catch up. Um, Sister-in-law's hand, still working on it. But I did a lot of the Zen Tango on the airplane. Um, coming home, the airplane was quite bumpy, so I wasn't going to Zentangle. Another page I made while I was there, just cherries and you know, some fun. Okay. Did do a little prep work for tonight. Um, I painted the background. I used um, a couple shades of green on the bottom. I used this um, green gold, which I absolutely love this color, this green gold from Golden. Really like the um, technique, the color you get. And it wasn't quite, it was a little too yellow for me, so I did go over it with another green. And this is just a folk art green. I just like the color. It was nothing about the paint that was in particularly good. And I went over that to give it a little more. Then I went with a really uh, pale blue up on top, but I didn't have a pale blue color enough, so I actually ended up going over it with gesso. 
to give it a really, really pale, pale blue color. And you'll see the napkin that I'm about to use, and it, it still wasn't even light enough. Okay, going through my napkins, I found this one, and this is the one I want to use as a paint over. So the reason I, as you see, I paint it in the beginning is um, the reason I do that is I want to match the background. Um, oh, hello, Robin has joined us too, and Carol's here, and Barbara's here. Thank you all. Um, so I like to, to find the napkin I'm going to use, and then I try to paint my background to match the, the napkin I'm going to use. So I did that exact same thing over here when I did this one. This napkin is kind of has like a brownishness to it, a light pale brown. So as you see, all the rest of the page is done with that same pale brown. So it almost looks like it's one. It, be, it blends in. So that's my idea there. This napkin happens to be quite a large one, as you see. It happens to take the whole bottom. You know how they're in fourths. So I actually got another one of these out of this. Now, when you're working with napkins, a couple things that I strongly suggest. Um, uh, the PPA um, is a must. You want to do get PPA to do this technique. I don't think any other adhesive that I've ever tried works as well for me as um, PPA does with napkins. So, And you can get this at usartquest.com. And she does have napkins there, but um, I know a lot of you already have napkins because you've been playing with my um, napkin swap that we've got going. So you probably have a whole lot of really pretty and really cool napkins. So what I'm trying to do right now is you've got to split your napkins. You only want the top layer. And a lot of napkins are three layers, so make sure you get all um, you know, three layers apart. I got it in one shot. There's, this is actually two layers right here. Now I keep this, so that would not get thrown away to me. And I know that this is the um, only layer because it's completely see-through. If there was any white back here, I know that I have one more layer. So make sure you get it completely um, taken care of, you know, off. So I'm going to adhere this directly onto my book there. And that's what I'm going to start with as my background for my beautiful page I'm going to make tonight. Isn't that a pretty napkin? I know, that's a really cool face stamp. Um, thank you, uh, Gloria. I like that stamp, too. Um, I found it, I went to, while I was with Joe, um, we went to a, um, um, a stamp show. I think it was called Stamp Away. And or something like that. I'm not positive. I could be wrong, but it's a stamp show, and that was one of the stamps that I picked up while I was there. So I'm just putting um, PPA directly onto my page. And remember, I like to use this particular paint, um, adhesive with napkins because it, it has. I don't know what she does to this stuff. But it kind of has a silkiness to it, so it really doesn't harm your napkins. It, you get it, you get it pretty well adhered, and it doesn't seem to break them up. And I'm very gently putting this napkin down, and then I'm going to go back over it with more PPA. And when I do this, I work very gently, and I work from the center, I work out. And it's going to get a very gentle working from the center out. And if you did miss a spot, it'll absorb through the napkin and adhere to the background for you. So I'm being very gentle when I do this. Don't be rough with your napkins. Because they're just, you know, it's just tissue. I mean, it's really, really, really tender. So I really work really easily with my napkins. But isn't this a beautiful napkin? So yeah, that was one of the things that we did. We went to the stamp show, and I got a few stamps while I was there. It was a really fun show. Um, Stamp Away is in August. Okay, then I'm wrong on Stamp Away. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. It's just like a. It's like it was like an expo, but it was a stamp show. But um, oh, I don't know what name of it was. But anyways, I did get a few stamps, and that was one of the ones that I got. So I'm almost got this completely adhered down here. And then the following weekend is when we went up to US Art Quest and we stayed with Susan, the owner of US Art Quest. We stayed at her house. She's got a beautiful property. Really nice place to stay. So that was really fun. Yeah, I actually had a really fun time. And I also went over to Pittsburgh. I went to the NAPTA show. Um, and that's the National Art Material Trade Show. It's like um, um, CHA, but it's CHA is for crafting, and this is more for art. So I think I got a good... Sorry, I know this is boring to watch me glue, but... I want to make sure I got it good and down. And then I'm just going to rip away my excess here. So I'm not, that's how I'm going to get rid of my excess. And you could keep that, but I'm not going to, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, you definitely could use it on collage or something somewhere else, but I'm not going to stress about it. I got lots and lots. Oh, look how pretty that is already. So you see where I'm going here. This is where you can get in the paint by numbers. So that looks beautiful. Let me dry it. Now again, you got to be careful with the drying because that's a very tender little um, piece of paper there. Okay, so there we go. So already, that's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, I've already got a beautiful start on a awesome page in my art journal. So let me so tell you what I'm going to do next. As I was talking to you guys, I went to NAFTA. That's the National Art um, Show. And I did get to meet, I was so excited, the gentleman who makes these journals that I really like, which is the... Um, these are the Cottonwood Art Journals, and they um, they were there at the show, so I was very excited. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to take my paintbrush, and I'm going to start doing what I call paint, paint over. So you're going to do the take the, the picture that you've got going here, and you're just going to start painting it. And as you see, it's already done for you, so you just follow the colors. So where there's pink here, I'm going in and I'm putting, I'm going with a really fun fluorescent pink because I can, <laughs> you know, you don't have to go so bright, you can be a little more um, subdued if you want, it's kind of showing up red on that sheet there, but it's fluorescent, it's actually fluorescent magenta, that's right, I don't have fluorescent pink, so I am going to go over it with some pink. So I'm going to kind of mix the pink and the magenta together here to get really the color I want. So you see where I'm going? This is going to give me what I call a paint over look. And I'm not going to torture you through the whole paint over because that would be very boring. But I am going to do a little here so you see where I'm going. And I do, what I always do is I go in and 
um, do one color at a time. So right now I'm kind of doing this uh, darker pink color, we're going to say. So I'm going to go in and do all of that. And I am mixing my colors over here on the palette. Oh, you can see that good. So you see where I'm, where I, why I would call it the paint over, and it's going to make it look like I painted this, and that it wasn't just a napkin down. See where I'm going? Isn't that awesome? The napkin is gorgeous. You should, um, you should join in. I have on my group called All Things Terry Sproul. Right now, we have a napkin swap going in on right now. It's only for people in the U.S. and Canada. Well, actually, we just did Canada, so it would be nice to us. <laughs> it was so expensive to do Canada. Um, but if you want to join that, there's still time. You can still join in on that. And it's a great way to get a bunch of napkins. Also, another really good trick I can tell you is to go to... Um, um, something Tuesday. I just drew a blank. It's the name of a store. It's called something Tuesday. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. Go to Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning has a bunch of um, napkins for a really cheap price. Now the only bad part about doing that over say the napkin swap and I'll explain more about that in a minute, is, you know, you have to buy a whole package. The whole package is actually pretty cheap. You can get a whole package there of, like, I don't know, 20 different, 20 napkins, but they're all going to be the same for, like, 250 It's really, really, really reasonable. And if you've ever bought napkins, you know how expensive these fancy ones can be. Um, if you do have a question for me, I know, isn't this a cool um, project? Thank you, Vanessa, no problem. So, the napkin swap, how that's working is you join my group called All Things Terry Sproul, if you're not already. On there in the file, the files are up towards the top, there is a file called napkin swap. And what you would do is go in and edit that. And you're going to put your name, your address at the bottom of that list that's going in there. And when the list gets to your name, you will get a package in the mail, and it will be a whole package of napkins. And then you take out as many as you want, and you add in the same amount of numbers. So if you took out 15 napkins, you put 15 napkins back in. Now remember I just told you to go to um, uh, Tuesday morning and get your napkins. What I tell you, you can get 20 in a package. So you can take one, maybe two packages that you bought, go over to and get this, join this, and you could put, you know, 20, 40 of them back in and get 40 different ones out. See how cool that is? Oh, there's lots of napkins at Party City, too. Hobby Lobby has seasonal ones. Great price, too. Great ideas. Thank you, guys. Um, so wherever, you know, as you see, you can get napkins at a lot of places for a really cheap price. Now, I did come in here because I was thinking this um, color was just way too bright, and I added some more um, deeper magenta in here because I just it was just too much for me. So I've kind of changed colors a little bit. Well, I know, I'm getting boring, so I'm going to change colors here in a second. But I would continue all the way across with the same color. I'm going to change colors because, like I said, you don't want to watch me paint. I'm going to grab some green. Because you want to paint everything that is on your, you know, Napkin. Well, I shouldn't say that. Not everything. Because over here on this one, I didn't paint like that. I left it in the background to kind of sink into the background, but I painted the main elements. So that isn't true. You do not want to paint everything. But you want to get, you know, like I would definitely do these uh, the leaves down here at the bottom, you know, for sure, because they're, they're obvious. You know what I mean? So you don't have to do everything, but I would do all the main objects for sure. 
Now I really like when I have trans, um, translucent paint, which this particular one is, because it still brings the napkin through. So you're getting the napkin art already done for you with your paint over it, making it look like you painted it, even though you didn't. I love that. I love cheating because I'm not the t most talented person in the world. I'm going to grab some more paint. Hold on here. I need a darker green. Uh, that's metallic, though. Do I want metallic? No. Okay. I'm going to have to make something here. Okay. This paint that I pulled out here is cheap, um, cheap green, so it's not going to be translucent, which I'm not going to like. So I need to fix that. Oop. That was way more paint than I wanted on there, but that's okay. So I am going to add some glazing medium to it, and that's going to. make it a little more translucent for me which is what I'm after so I'm just mixing it together there and then coming in with and if I get too much paint not a problem that's why they have napkins to dab So if you don't like what you got, just dab it off, or if it's too, because that's really, really turning out really watery there. A little more, a little more paint in my glaze. I had more glaze than I had paint, I think. So I wasn't getting a pretty color. So see where I'm going into the darker spots now. But do you see how easy this technique is? Wouldn't this be a super fun, easy technique to do? Hi, Mark. No problem, Mark. That's why they're recorded. So you can be late. I'm coming in with my other green this is I love this green I think it's called green gold it's a golden color so pretty just love the way that turned out right there so I'm doing that darker green kind of in the center or the, where the darker parts are on my little lily, they almost look like uh, lily pads, but I know they're not. They're just the leaves to those flowers. Maybe they are lily pads, I don't know. They're just pretty. Oh, fingertip towels? Cool, don't forget to, yeah, that's a great idea. So as you guys are commenting left and right, you know that there's lots of great places to get napkins. So you can really find some really pretty um, napkins to do some of this beautiful work that we're doing. But you see where I'm going, how easy this is? And I'm, I'm just going to do this side. I'm not going to finish the whole page. I'll do the rest of it off page. And I'm not even cleaning my brush in between. I'm just going in and getting paint. And this is why I call it paint by number because basically it's super easy. You've got, you know, the paint there for the lines there, the colors there. Unless you want to go completely opposite, which who says you can't? Why couldn't I have painted those, you know, green? 
or or purple, you know what I mean? The the leaves purple. I could have gone completely crazy and did something completely opposite of what the original artist did. So have fun with yours. Maybe you go nuts with it. I'm kind of a a realist, I admit. Um, I'm an Aries, so I have a tendency of wanting my art to have some reasoning behind it. So I couldn't do that because it would bother me. But I love when other people do it because I wish I could. So see how that's really coming along, how I'm already getting, you know, it's it's I'm getting paint. I need to come in a tiny bit of yellow. Again, way too bright, so I'm going to wash it out. So don't worry if you, you know, you get something where you think, oh my God, what did I just did? Just blend it out. Also, while I was out in Pittsburgh, or out, oh, no problem, Sherry, enjoy it. It's a great technique, isn't it? Um, I went to see my little brother. He lives in Pittsburgh, so I stayed with him and his wife while I was um, in that area. Going to the NAPTA show was actually in Pittsburgh. So it's been a long time since I was actually born in Pittsburgh. It's been a long time since I've been there. Um, my family moved me when I was quite young, so I really uh, didn't get to spend much time in Pittsburgh. So I am going in with some get some white because I need some really light pink. So see how cool this technique is? I just love this technique. It's so simple. So simple. Any, all of your, if you definitely, if you're stealing it as a teacher, and I agree, it's a great technique. It's super easy because your students will come out thinking they're masters. Because they really do have a sense of um, accomplishment when they do this technique. Because you really can't mess it up per se you know see what I'm saying it just it's just too easy so I've just about got this one side painted in here Just love it. I know this is such a cool technique, isn't it? So you really can't do wrong. And I would definitely be coming in and doing the background because I know it's it's showing up actually pretty good on here, but they really are two different color blues. So I will um, feather that in too up here. And I'm almost done, I swear, guys. I'm just having so much fun painting. I don't want to stop. And I know it's boring to watch somebody paint. So I apologize. <laughs> I know I keep saying that and I just keep painting. Because I'm having fun. That's why. And you can put layers on top of layers. So if I got too much yellow there, I can come over with the pink and just kind of tone it down a little.
The only thing I did, Vanessa, was to adhere down a napkin in the beginning. So this is basically just a napkin. And blue. So I am going to paint, clean my paintbrush in between here, though. So paintbrush, clean. And then I would come in with my blue where I have got too much paint going. And get some background, blend that these two colors together. And I'm going to not get my um, page too wet because remember there is a napkin here, so you need to be gentle still. But I want these two to blend and match, so I will come in and just get a little water on the side. So anywhere that I messed up with my paint, I'm just coming in with the blue. And it's given a little bit of a shadow around those flowers also. Oh good, I'm glad you guys all love this technique. Isn't it super fun? But you see how easy it is? I mean, it's just a really fun technique. And I would come in again along here on the bottom. Get this blue more prominent. So it really makes it look like when you're done that you painted your whole page even though we didn't do anything. So this side I've been painting on. This side has only got a little paint on it. See the difference? It looks like because you're going to get paint strokes brush, you know, paint brushes strokes you're going to make look, it's going to look like when you're done that you paint it. This background. Even though you didn't. I just love it. Oh, cool. Yeah, so this is really a fun technique. Um, if you did miss the first few minutes, um, I did talk about that there is a design team call over at the um, Robin's Nest team. And that's a really fun team to be on. We do a lot of cross promotion. Um, they have, a, they get a a lot of product. If you love dewdrops, which I love my dewdrops. So, anyways, I started painting over there, and I wasn't supposed to. I'm only supposed to be painting on this side. <laughs> but is, uh, it, this is the other thing about this technique is it's it draws you in. I'm just using basic acrylic paints. I'm not using anything fancy as far as um, paints go. Um, some of them that I'm using are cheap folk art acrylic paints and some of them are expensive um, golden paints so it's really whatever colors I have on hand that match the um, the background that I'm trying to achieve here is what I'm using honestly so whatever you want um, I do per I mean if somebody asked me what are my favorite paints I really like um, U.S. Art Quest and Golden's paints. I think they're probably my favorite. They're really deep, good quality um, paints. But, you know, if you can't afford them, you can't afford them. You know, do what you can afford. Hope that answered your question, Karen. Thank you for asking. If you do have a question, try to put it in caps for me so I don't miss it. I am... Um, painting and watching the um, board at the same time. So I, I can miss a question. If I do, please, please ask again. 
I don't like missing questions. So again, I'm just coming in with some paintbrush and going in and getting this trying to get a much paler pink than that. There we go. And it's almost white in this picture, but like I said, you can make it any color you want. You don't have to. It's a crappy paintbrush. <laughs> I think I'm going to throw that paintbrush away. That <laughs> thing was horrible. Oh, yeah, much better. So, use PP on the name. Yes. Um, uh, yes, I couldn't do this painting. I'm not that talented. Um, but yes, PP on the napkins I strongly suggest um, because it's, it's just super soft on your napkins and it lays your napkins down and it didn't rip it at all. As you see, I didn't get one tear in my napkin at all. No tears at all. Completely adhered it down without giving me any problems at all. I couldn't, Barbara, but I know you're talented enough you could. I've seen your, your work before. Barbara is extremely talented. Barbara is on a couple of my design teams and she is just absolutely amazing. Um, some of the art she does. I don't consider myself an artist, so I um, try to find ways to do it the cheating way, and this is my cheating way. That you're all welcome to steal. <laughs> I didn't invent it anyways. And remember to do your stems. My stems, as you notice, are a little like kind of a brownish color. So I'm going to grab this brown, which is a U.S. Art Quest, um, excuse me, uh, golden paint, and do the stems. And then I have a, a stamp I'm going to use here in a minute. Stems have a little bit of a kind of brownish red, so that's why I picked this um, this uh, Nikki Ozo Gold color. It's it's again one of my favorite colors in U.S. Uh, for uh, golden paints. There's a couple of them that I just absolutely love. They're really really expensive though, but you need very little of it. It goes a long way. How did you, I, I know someone missed the first 15. Yes, um, what you want to do to just do a quick ref refresher, hold on, let me grab something. I took a napkin, this is the napkin I used right here, and you want to take off the two, there's two, there's two plies on here total. So you want to make sure you get down to just the, basic um, basic uh, napkin. So you want to get off both pieces of white. So I'm just doing a quick refresher. And then, hold on, I'm trying to get it off here. My hands have paint on them, so there it is. Okay, you want to get all three layers off. That still has a layer on it. Because see how it's still white? So there's still another layer here that 
I need to pull off. Okay, so there's the second layer. Okay, so I keep these for other projects. Then I took this and I laid it down onto my book. Well, actually, first thing I did is I painted the background this um, blue up on top and a little bit of green on the bottom. Then I took my napkin um, after I took all three layers uh, or all two layers off and I used PPA Matte Perfect Paper Adhesive from usartquest.com and I heared it down. I put my PPA on first then I laid my napkin down and then I took uh, more PPA and going from the center out, I brushed it on top. I let that dry. Once that's dry, then I started doing paint. I'm just taking regular acrylic paint, nothing special. And I'm just painting over the napkin exactly in the same spots that it already is. So that's why I call it paint by number. You're basically looking at the image that's already in front of you and you're following the the colors. Basically that's it. I mean it's really really super super simple to do this technique. Hope that helped. The best place to get PPA is at usartquest.com. Um, there is a few, um, you know, stores that carry it, but usually I haven't seen it at like Michaels, or I haven't seen it at um, Hobby Lobby. I I would suggest going directly to usartquest.com and ordering it directly from her. And while you're there, she's got all kinds of other stuff like napkins. She's got a whole mess load of napkins also there. And she does have it where you don't have to, you would buy a package and they're all different. So you would get a nice selection of napkins right off the bat. That napkin right that I use right here is one of her napkins. So you'll get a really nice selection of napkins. So you could, um, while you're there, you could, you know, order some, you know, order more than just the uh, the PPA. Hope that helped. You think you've seen PPA at Hobby Lobby? Oh good. I could be wrong. We um, we just got a Hobby Lobby not too long ago so um, I don't claim to I don't I get into Hobby I don't get into Hobby Lobby all the time because we don't have We just got it. Okay, I'm gonna quit painting, really. But this is so addicting. That's why I'm saying it's so easy to do. And I usually don't switch around colors as much as I am here. I usually do the whole thing, you know, in one color, and then I'll go back for, with the next color, and I keep adding. But look at that. Look how pretty that is over there. I'm just loving it. Okay, I'm really going to stop painting. I know I keep saying that, huh? I know, Terry quit stopping. <laughs> it's so much fun though, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. I messed something up here and I don't like it. It's going to bother me. Okay. Okay, much better. Okay, the other thing I wanted to add to this page, where time are we? Oh, wow. See, I got carried away. That was way too much fun. Um, while I was also in um, Ohio, I got to meet the ladies who own Versa, and it's versastamps.com. And just like the name says, it's all Versa's. And I got to go to their warehouse. So while I was at their warehouse, I found this wonderful stamp about art and thought it would be just perfect for art journals. Okay. 
Yes, huge bottle of PPA is the way to do it. And it says, Art, I, um, in your own unique way, you raise kindness to a to the art. Art, in your own unique way, you rise kindness to an art. So that's the uh, quote I found. Thought that was really pretty, so I thought I'd use that. I'm also going to. Do a little bit of stress inks around the edge. I'm only going to do this side because I um, haven't finished painting the other side yet. And I want to get the paint in there. But just to frame it out, I'm using uh, distress inks just to give a good blend around the edges. Frame that out a little bit, and I think that's where I'm going to end it. I'm thinking about putting, but I need to paint on the back here. But I'm going to put this uh, bumblebee also, big old bumblebee. I think I'm going to put that right there, and that'll be my page when I'm done. I will paint the bumblebee when I'm done, but I will have to. Uh, I guess I really quickly could do that. Hold on. Get the blue here. So I'm just uh, blending the background in. And I will go down and fi finish the rest of that. But I want this to look like it's painted. So I'm real quickly going in and getting that done. Okay. I'm going to dry that. Okay, now I'm going to use a uh, Indian ink to stamp this. <laughs> Thank you. I kind of like that side too. I know this almost is looking better than this side, huh? I'm pretty happy with it too. That's what I'm saying. This technique is just so much fun. You can't go wrong. It just It's just fun. So I've got the big bumblebee stamp here. And I'm going to stamp that in there. Perfect. Now, my yellow. And I'm going to go in and paint him. Well, I'm going to just quickly dry it, just make sure it doesn't bleed. Indian ink, once it is dry, will not um, cause you any problems, but I just want to make sh sure, so that's why I dried it. So I'm putting my bumblebee in. Got to do something cool with his wings. I am going to use... Interference blue. Remember this, guys? We haven't used this in a while. The interferences don't have a color. They just have... See how that just gives you a blue tint when you just move it? I love this side, this technique with um, wings. So again, you need very little of this because when you use good paints, you need very little. So I just put a little dab down. And I'm going to paint the wings. And they're going to be kind of translucent, as they should be. And they're going to have a um, blue tint to them. Now, interferences, they have a couple different colors. They have gold, they have um, red, they have green, and they have blue. And I think that's all, but I could be wrong.
So I'm just painting my little bee's wings. Love it. Okay. What do you think? See that? Isn't that a cool technique? So there's my bee. I'm going to continue to paint over here when I'm done. Is there any questions? Because I'm going to kind of finish up now. Um, I'm just going to continue to paint while I'm talking out, see if any questions come in. If not, I'm going to let you guys go. I know. Where did I get the bumblebee? I got the bumblebee from um, stamppotique.com. And that's stamppotique.com. Dot com is where I got the bumblebee. Any other questions? And I appreciate you putting that question in caps for me. It is so much easier for me to see when somebody puts it in caps. I know it is perfect on his wings. I love it. I'm really happy with it too. Any other questions while well, I just continue to paint here? <laughs> I could get, this is the bad part, is I just totally get into painting and I just can just get lost in this technique. Because I feel like it's just so easy to do and you don't feel, I feel totally not intimidated when I do this technique. But I really can't do it wrong. You can put color on top of color. Any other questions? Okay. So, hope you liked my um, project. If you were influenced by this and want to put up a project of your own, join my group called All Things Terry Sprout, and that's on Facebook. Also, please give me a thumbs up, thumbs up, please, on my video. That keeps me ranked really well with, uh, Google, uh, with Google and YouTube so that I can continue to do these free lessons for you guys. Thank you again. Join me again next Tuesday when I show you another fun technique using and for your art journal. And remember, this can be used on a canvas, too. Good night, all. Bye.